Hashtag Impact invites you in to eavesdrop on intimate and honest conversations on creating positive change in the world. Brought to you with love by me, Regina Larco. I want to encourage you to get curious about what making an impact means to you. Hashtag Impact started with one voice, mine, and the voice of my first guest. But since then, our team grew. Today, our talented co-hosts and podcasting students record from across the globe. This time, you hear from our guest host, Aisha Fauci, based in Bali, Indonesia. As we got ready to bring you this episode, Aisha and me jumped on a call to work out post-production details and dates. And we got talking about what makes Hashtag Impact Podcast special And I wish I would have recorded that conversation because I had this massive aha moment realizing that Hashtag Impact has given so many people the courage to share their voice in the first place. I was reluctant to share my own voice when I first started and many of our guests were nervous to share their story too. What you are about to hear showcases how important it is to believe in your own abilities despite all the setbacks, to keep observing as you put together the pieces of experiences that life keeps throwing at you. Before you notice, the dots start connecting, just like they did for the guest featured in today's episode. And there it is the courage to start. If you have been wanting to find the courage to share your own voice, my brand new audiobook on how to start podcasting with ease will help. Take a look inside at hashtag impact.com slash book. But first, eavesdrop on Aisha's conversation with Buya to find out how the qualified biologist build a sustainable impact business from scratch. A big hello to all Hashtag Impact podcast listeners joining us today. I am Aisha Fauzi, your host, coming to you from Bali, Indonesia, also known as the Island of Gods. This episode is part of Season 5 of the Hashtag Impact Podcast, focusing on the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, or as we like to call them, the SDGs. So today, we're here with Buya Istiklal, a qualified biologist and the founder of Urban Biologist Bali. And so before we introduce Buya, I'd like to set the scene for you as to what today's podcast is going to be about. So Bali is a holiday paradise island. Due to its popularity, we're so blessed here with many hotels and restaurants, which means that the hungry tourists are catered to in terms of any type of food that they want to eat. Now, many adventurous travelers have also come and ended up settling in Bali. A question that this raises, though, is how does Bali, which used to be a sleepy island of rice paddies, sustainably deal with this urbanization? And this includes the mounting waste problem. Well, urban biologist Bali has a solution. So, Pat Buya, welcome to the episode today. Hello. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm very good, thank you. That's great. Thank you so much for joining us today. So, I think well, let's just jump straight into it. So, what does your company, Urban Biologist Bali, do? Well, yeah, Urban Biologist Bali, yes. we are uh, focus on waste problem and also the the we care about the using non using pesticide and also we a group of people local biologists who doing finding the uh database of mm-hmm. local biodiversity as well and and it's a uh, part like waste pesticide it has yeah. their own project for example in waste we have a urban compost bali project in the reducing pesticide program we got Urban Mosquito Bali. Yeah, that's, a, that's about us. Excellent. And so one thing that I came to know about your company is you also have um, the urban compost. Exactly, scene. yeah. 
And so for the listeners who may not know about the urban compost scheme that Urban um, Biologist Bali offers, it's basically a scheme where households and restaurants can pay for a service where you get a bucket every single week and you throw out your organic waste. And in return, at the end of the month, you will receive a fine compost product. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I want to say a lump of compost, lump but that's compost. not right. <laughs> um, you will basically receive a pile of compost, which is really fluffy dirt ready for you to use for planting any vegetables or flowers that you want. Exactly. And this is a really healthy organic soil yep. that actually helps biodiversity. And so in terms of the compost system that Urban Biologist Bali has, can you just talk us through the process? And actually, actually, before we even go into the process, how did the idea come up for you? Well, it was on 2019 when the first time when Compost Bali okay. launched. Uh -huh. Before that, I had some experience working with other company. Most of them focus on environmental and during that time i figured out that well they all have solution but the solution sometimes not really practical to the very low level of people i mean the, on the very on on all the people they focus on plastic they focus on non-organic collection non-organic but i couldn't find any of them focus on organic waste Food scraps. Food scrap, yeah, yeah and, and also the, the garden waste. Mm. Well, but yeah, I'm, I'm just wonder why no no one care about the organic waste, food scrap. That's come an idea for me. Uh, I know that food scrap is a really good raw material for compost, for soil. But yeah, uh, then, then I'm, I'm, I, I was searching how, how can I take benefit from that because on that time before 2019 there was a time when i was jobless mm. uh, i was jobless uh, and I'm, i was still trying to find a new job but i cannot be like this all the time so and i know there is a problem i know the solution and then yeah uh, that's that's come an idea to build urban compost the pickup and the idea is how can i collect the food scrap or any organic waste not to send to landfill instead compost it that, that's how urban compost was born and regarding the process that actually there is no super science process in making compost it's a lot of error a lot of trial uh, and but now we already have a fixed method how we can make compost most more efficient Perfect. Yeah. So it was born out of necessity, not just for Bali in terms of dealing with the waste problem, but also in terms of your own circumstances. Right. Yeah. And mm. yeah. I, I, well, I, I was a guy with really uh, what do you call it? In fact, uh, I know that the system mm -hmm. in in Bali and maybe in the whole Indonesia is not good in terms of waste management. They keep mm. the very old way. They just collect everything, send landfill, collect everything, send landfill. That's, that's, that's happened in, in Indonesia. And I know this must be changed by having a composting program from Open Compost. We also, by the same time, promoting everyone to separate their waste. Mm -hmm. we, we tell everyone that your food scrap can be really useful can benefit to environment, can benefit to all people. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you're connecting the dots, aren't you? Because ultimately, you you're identifying a problem that you can see, that you can witness on a daily basis, and you're going that step further based on your qualification as a biologist right. and trying to find a solution that works not just um, at a at a personal level in terms of generating an uh, income for yourself, but also from a social perspective, right? Because right. you're now taking a solution and making it a community solution. Right. And so it's super fascinating. It's something that I think represents a scalable solution that we would like to see in more towns and cities in the world and definitely in Indonesia. Yeah. 
Um, so in terms of where you see this business going, how has Bali responded to the services so far? Well, since we start the program, so we got almost 500 sign up and join the program. That's also including, I guess, uh, 20% was a businesses. So uh, that's really contribute to no landfill, no waste to landfill from our client and we making compost from the food scrap. But yeah, unfortunately, not so many local people in Bali uh, already joined. That's, that's one issue that we want to fix. Okay. And yeah. do you think the lower sign-up rate of local households, is that um, they just don't know about it or do they have certain habits that need to be addressed or is it just an awareness in education process? Well, uh, I, I think the, the reason why uh, very little uh, local is because maybe the problem is we they don't realize our existence yet. Because, yeah, uh, to be honest, we haven't got a uh, super effort to promote ourselves. So that's number one. And, and yeah, uh, the issue that local people is less educated and less responsible of their ways, that's true. But uh, lately, the, the number of sign up from local people is increasing. That's encouraging. Encouraging, right. And uh, even, yeah, uh, still the tourists, the, the guests or the Western people still the most people that sign up. Mm. So so perhaps it's based on awareness that foreigners may have in terms of having seen a similar service in their countries and their towns and cities yes. and wanting to address that issue again in a similar way. And yeah. you're doing this great thing by providing the service. And so I think one thing that we have really seen in terms of these composting models is that a lot of them are NGOs set up by local councils or government wanting to actually increase waste separation to reduce the amount of organic waste that goes to landfill. But one thing that's unique about your specific business is that it's actually not an NGO. It's a proper commercial business. So right. the question for you then, Buya, are you profitable? Yes, exactly. That's 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 why we still here. We still on the road. Uh, well, uh, if it's not profitable, it doesn't make sense for us. That makes us alive. In the beginning, I start with only me and a part-time helper in the field, and then now we got ten person of the team. That's that's show that we grow. We profitable and makes uh, makes makes sense to, to to us, and yeah, we we still we also on the development stack of the facility. So without profit, that's not gonna happen. Mm. We got more pickup vehicle units, and we uh, we all now secure the land for composting process in Buduk here. Yeah, what I want to say is without profit margin. It's, it's not going to be sustainable. That's the, the that's the concept we we mean. And and that's a really good point. Yeah. I think one thing that shows that you have actually been growing at a really good rate is you now have is it three locations in Bali? Exactly. We we all we now have three operational zone in Sanur in in Bukit area and also in here in China. And so if we can help our listeners imagine a little bit more visually in terms of what these locations do, yeah. right, that you have, can you maybe talk us through very simply the chemistry behind how compost is actually made all the way from when you collect the food scraps from your customers all the way to when the compost that is ready to now be delivered back to your customers is ready so step by step what does that process actually look like well so if you uh if you want to start the program with ben compost then you need to sign up fill your information and you yeah basically you do you can do it in online on the website and then we get your information and we start we give your composting kit which is a nice eight liter bucket with a lid that's for collecting your food scrap all you need to do is just fill it, the bucket, with your food scrap, raw or cooked 
doesn't matter so yeah fill fill uh, and every week the urban compost team will come to collect the whole bucket and replace with the new empty and clean bucket and you keep filling again again and the bucket with full of the food scrap will be sent to the uh, composting facility which may be in the Changgu Sanur or the Bukit area and then we put the organic scrap there to be composted combined with the uh, kitchen scrap, food scrap or and combined with the garden scrap by very simple method we do uh, turning, mixing and watering and it takes less than three months at the end it turns into something that looks really same with the dirt like soil black and smell very good yeah and that's that's a sign that the, the compost is cooked and finished and then that's the time we return back the compost to the uh, subscriber and so you if i'm to understand correctly with what you just said there Buya, it means that you're not using a secret formula or a secret recipe for compost the secret formula is yeah we need to know to understand that the materials that most material contain more nitrogen the other material contain more carbon on a very simple ways there is a wet waste and dry waste we need to combine all the material into the very right portion i can say like one nitrogen or one wet waste with three or four or dry waste that's it the very the very important first step after that yeah the very regular composting process turning watering turning watering and then yeah and then finish perfect so that means that for any of our listeners out there who are interested in starting a compost business or their own composting system at home what that just tells them is that as long as you have, as you say, the wet waste, which is the fresh organic scraps, and it doesn't have to be organic, to be honest, when we mention organic, what we're just meaning is no diapers or nappies, no plastic bags, no yeah. um, in normal rubbish that you'd see in rubbish bins like cans or bottles or anything like that, right? Yeah. We're just talking about the wet waste that comes from kitchens, yes. right? either scraps of food that you can't eat because it's not digestible or even um, leftovers that you don't right. want to eat. Right, yeah, right. something like that. Or when you finish cooking yeah. and, you know, onion skins, eggshells. Exactly, right. um, yeah, fruit peels and some part of veggie that lost when you prepare the food. Right, yeah. okay. And of, of course the, the leftover and the plate. Yeah. 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 Or even if if you've cooked too much or if right. you've cooked something and it's gone off. Or even rotten meat, rotten eggs that can be compost. So you you actually in terms of your wet waste, yeah. you combine um meat products. Well, in the very in the home composting system, most people like say no to meat product and other product. But the truth is they still compostable. Mm. It's just how we can man- we can deal with that in the composting facility uh, in our management we said that something like that should be processed should be able to be processed mm. so it makes uh, it easier for your customers to right. sign up because now they're not having to separate the fish right. bones from the if you want peels. to do composting at your home that's good idea if you separate that, that things yeah. because that's going to attract fly maybe rats. Uh, rats maybe dogs but yeah there is a like some tricks how to do it uh, that, that's happening in, in our yeah. composting facility okay so i think you know if i hear correctly then it's not so much a magic formula for the compost but it's actually the magical process yeah. right because there is this misconception that we generally hear that compost is a messy process it's a smelly process and it's just um, a process that not many people want to get involved in. And yeah. it's too difficult. It's too complicated, right? Yeah. But what you're telling me is that it's actually just four ingredients. So it's the wet waste, as we talked about. It's some dry waste. And that can be, you know, any type of carbon. Um, and the ratio, I understand, is like one to four. Right. One of wet waste yeah. to four of dry waste. And so dry waste could be dry leaves. It could be um, small branches. Yes. From from gardening, 
Um, yeah, that's that's the reason why we also taken we also collect garden waste. They need to be chopped smaller, mm-hmm. and they contain carbon more than nitrogen. Right. So yeah. ultimately, you almost want to have more gardening waste. Yeah. To your food waste, right? Right. And then that's the correct formula because now you have for every one bucket of food waste, you have four buckets of garden exactly, waste, something. and you also have water and you have air. Right. And exactly. time. Time and is time, probably yeah. the fifth. Fifth ingredient, right? Well, maybe, yeah, the, the other that most people know about composting, they need to add extra bacteria in form of liquid uh, activate or something like that. That's in urban compost we don't need because we know that this kind of bacteria already there, already in the food scrap, already in the garden waste. We just create the situation, the environment, which can make this bacteria grow very well, healthy, and do their job to decompose the organic. Adding extra liquid activator, I can say, is not necessary. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Okay, and and I think that probably cuts down on the cost that you have exactly. as well. Exactly, yeah. That's, yeah uh, in maybe before, there, there is a composting company that focus on producing compost. Yeah, one of the mostly costs is the cost for adding mm. the bioactivator, which is expensive. Perfect. So I see this as, this is almost like a, a good science project for children at school yeah. to do. Because if you have the school cafeteria, which has food waste coming from the cafeteria, you've got the gardens and the grounds of the school, including maybe the soccer field, right, from which you get the garden waste. And then everyone has water and air, thankfully, you know, basic ingredients for yeah. our life. So this is something that potentially school science projects can um, explore and right. start a compost system in their school and see how that works. And I think the the exciting thing about this idea is that it's not just something that exists in Bali. It's not just something that is special to Bali necessarily. It's a great idea that... Um, we have an Indonesian having set up and, you know, it's a biologist having set up with the great idea of turning something that normally we wouldn't view as a resource, the rubbish, the waste, yeah. into um, something that can actually make money or if not, make food, more right. food. Yeah. And so how do you see this idea, especially when it comes to um, the waste management system that you've created, right? How would you look at scaling that up across Bali and maybe wider to the rest of Indonesia? Well, yeah, we really want to grow this initiative, maybe also getting more partner or collaborate with other people. We know that making compost is not hard, it's simple. Uh, yes, uh, and we want to replicate this system across Bali first, maybe across South Bali first. That's why now we have three area, and we want to send this information to many people, maybe local people, that hey, making compost is easy, can do it, and by collaborating with us, maybe we can try to collect food scrap around their area and drop the compost to their own facility, something like that. And regarding to the school project, yeah, this is really really good school project if the school want to have this uh, composting program in their school yeah student can get involved and so many things can be learned from the compost they can see the process they can see the biodiversity in the compost pile and there there are so many practical things they they get in the class happening in the compost and I think that's a really interesting point you make there, Buya, especially around biodiversity. And I think um, with your qualification and your training specifically as a biologist, it's probably a great subject to touch on with you. So I want to explore a little bit more in terms of biodiversity. Why is compost potentially a better type of soil to use for planting? compared to, say, just buying potting mix from a plant nursery? Ah, uh, yeah. So if you ever look at the very good compost product, you can see with the bare eyes there are many living creatures walking in the compost. They must be micro-insects. And also in the good compost, there, there are, can say, maybe million bacteria in there that 
and all the creator there is work together creating a good soil and fix the fix the soil the native soil that may be uh, not good that's one thing that i can say the, the benefit of having great biodiversity in the in the handful of compost i suppose it's it's breaking the soil up right breaking the organic matter up right so that the roots can go deeper yeah because so. the soil is looser Yes, yes. So having a great biodiversity in the soil, that's that's one thing that can help the soil. That makes the root can easily through, and they also uh, they together bind the other micronutrients and help the roots to connect with the micronutrients. Mm. Okay, yeah. fantastic. Now I think this balance that nature actually has that we're now tapping into through the creation of compost is something that is gaining more popularity and so we're starting to see even Netflix programs right <laughs> i know i've seen the documentary called fantastic fungi oh yeah um and then there's another one called kiss the ground kiss the ground Chris, yeah. kiss the ground and it's a documentary on fixing carbon yeah. which is one of the biggest greenhouse gases in the air at the moment causing air pollution yeah. back into the soil right yeah. and so in terms of the positive effects that your commercial business has in terms of the environmental effect we can't we can't even measure right this is like beyond comparison because obviously it's something that we know is a huge problem we've had recent government meetings talking about climate change and i think without taking action now we're going to see the aftermath of this in the future in terms of the quality of soil lack of quality of soil yeah. right in terms of how our plants and vegetables grow and also what we then consume so it's it's basically creating this whole circular loop where with healthier soil coming from the compost that you create if you plant your vegetables in this compost you're going to end up with healthier vegetables to eat exactly yeah and then that goes back through the cycle because the food scraps from healthy vegetables that you've created now go back into the soil and create another round of compost exactly yeah and so biology is obviously your forte your expertise you've got other services that you also offer as part of your business yeah. and so Um, how do you also offer these other services to the community in Bali? Yeah, that's the the next program mm. we got is the urban mosquito. That's the the program which we provide the mosquito treatment without chemical involved in in the program. So no pesticide. No pesticide. And the, the program comes when I see most people here in Bali, yeah. especially they do fog fumigation, spraying fog, spraying chemical into their environment because of mosquito, which they not only kill mosquito but also kill the other beneficiary insect in the in the garden. And also they forget about the chemical itself for, for air for their for their health, and also they forget that. The chemical maybe stay on their uh, property. There is so many bad things having a fumigation, but I know that uh, there are a solution. There, there, there are uh, a method to fix the mosquito problem without that. That that's how when mosquito program is born. The point is, we want to introduce people that hey, we don't need this kind of fumigation to reduce the mosquito. We want to show people this is how to do it. Uh, and how how would you do that? That's actually yeah. when here in Bali when I I was a kid, I was taught that mosquito life cycle is from eggs and then the larvae and then uh, pupae and then the adult and they take in the water when they in the larvae stage and that's come uh, an idea. We can we can easily kill the larvae, but not the adult. But if we can prevent the larvae, then no mosquito. That's a very simple concept. You're going back to the source. Yeah, we kill or we prevent the the, the mosquito larvae, and then no mosquito. And for people listening at home, how would they identify where they can find mosquito larvae? Well, yeah, this this thing is really neat experience. I mean, they can be in the very mysterious place and a hidden place it can also can be found in the plants because some plants is positively associated with mosquito larvae and but most of them are related to the improperly waste management for example 
non-organic waste, a can that collect water and they care less about that and raining comes and then it's become mosquito breeding site. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I think one thing that I've seen at some resorts here in Bali is you start with, say, a coconut that's cut in half. Yeah. And sometimes it creates like a bowl, right? That the rain just, you know, yeah. you end up getting water right. in the bowl after rain. And so that's the kind of place where mosquitoes can yeah. lay eggs. Right. So there, there are so many cases how water collected accidentally and become a mosquito breeding site can be from the raining system that not flow well mm. and can be from the gutter from the mm. rain and the abandoned pot with water. A swimming pools, we swimming pool, uh, abandoned grass. Yeah. Well, that's number one. That's to be fixed. The waste management and how they uh, maintain their waste. And then yes, there there are some natural process. How can mosquito refer well? Because maybe in their area there are a lot of plants that associated with mosquito. For okay. example, like the Trevor palm, the bromeliad. And Celosia, the, the elephant ear, that's an uh, example of the plant that can collect water and can be placed mosquito can breed. Okay. And yeah, there is a trick how we can manage it. I see. So you, you're basically um, identifying the common habitats for mosquitoes right. and using your biology knowledge, yeah. you're identifying how you can stop the mosquito eggs from actually hatching and yeah. creating a new population of mosquitoes. And the other things that you need to know that the the mosquito that uh, bother us is the female one because they they uh, they the one that bite us because they need blood they need protein to lay egg and the the female is the the one that lay egg of course and once we successfully clear the area for example we clear with no standing water or maybe we can make the standing water not suitable for the female mosquito to breed. The female mosquito will fly away, which means in their area will save the mosquito by the time. Okay, that's that's fantastic. So it seems that urban biologist Bali is a company that has many different benefits, many different areas of expertise. And it seems that the synergies that you bring as a biologist is to create a safe human habitat either through managing pests, but also through safe and sustainable waste management in a way that actually brings the kind of biodiversity that we as humans want, not the biodiversity that we don't want, such as mosquitoes, right? This is a really good business model. Ultimately, we see see a lot of ideas born out of necessity nowadays, and, and that goes back to the start of the discussion we had today. And so for young people and, you know, even some of these school students who may be listening to this episode today and keen on taking on board, you know, some of the ideas you've presented here, what advice would you give to, say, a teenager um, looking at trying to solve environmental problems in today's world? Uh, Well, if we, yeah, as a teenager, maybe what I can give an advice is put your daily life into something that's meaningful. Don't waste your time, for example. Just hang around. I know uh, when I was teenager, I, I, I mean, I, I, I feel the same. Just do what I like. But in terms of protecting environment, what I can say is maybe getting involved in the community that move in environmental protection action. Maybe, maybe the very simple way you can start now is try to do respiration at home because it's a habit that not been teached by our parents, by our grandparents, because they don't have their behavior like that. So start with person now, and then in the five or ten years, it's become your habit. Okay. So create a waste separation habit at home. Yeah, start from now Right, yeah. perfect. And I think that's, that's also really good advice, because you never know what ideas you may get, depending on how much waste you realize yeah. you're producing, right? Right. And, you know, like you taking food scraps and turning that into a viable, profitable business. Others may come across, say, um, you know, plastic waste or soft plastics and textiles that suddenly they come up with another business idea. So I think as we move from a single-use, unsustainable lifestyle to trying to be more integrated, so trying to have, I think, what's known as a circular loop economy system where everything should be seen as a form of resource that can be put back into the economy somehow. 
that's a really good piece of advice for people to take into their daily lives. So before we end and before we wrap up for today, what we normally do as a tradition for our episodes is we have a quick fire round. So this is okay. three questions and I'll ask these three questions uh, one at a time. And if you can just think of the first answer off the top of your head that you just shout out, okay? Okay. So the first question is making an impact to you means? Means act out, not staying at home, not only listen and yeah, go outside. <laughs> awesome. That's a very important <laughs> thing. Good. And then second question. Yeah. So who inspires you in terms of how they tackle the United Nations SDGs? Could be a person, yeah. Well, it, it comes in my mind is the one that inspired me. But I don't know if they have a very good action in NFL. Is Pak Ahok Basuki Cahaya Purnama. Okay, and he is? He, is a, he, were, he was a, a former of uh, Jakarta governor. But what I'm, I'm, I'm taken from him is their, what, what do you call it? Like, like Social they awareness? Uh, they, you know, Pak Ahok is very good example as a leader. They're very firm yeah. and... What I, I see from him is he always do the right. They as a they are political uh, person. But what I can see from him is they cannot follow. Yeah, they yeah. they compromise on yeah. their values. And then finally, last question: How could everyone right now do something to make the world a better place? Start waste separation at home. Waste separation at home. Yeah. Okay. Very good advice. So Buya, it's been a pleasure. It's been. Yeah. Very informative. Um, I've really enjoyed our chat and hopefully the Hashtag Impact Podcast listeners have also found some really useful information. And I think the biggest takeaway that I'm taking from our conversation today is that profitable ideas can be born from extremely simple solutions. You just have to break the process down and stick to what you know and improve the process through trial and error. Yes. Great. It's okay. been lovely. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Yeah. Thank you for listening. If you would have told me five years ago when I just launched Hashtag Impact Podcast that one day there would be guest hosts reporting and recording for Hashtag Impact from all over the globe, I would not have believed you. But here it is. I just got to listen and feel inspired by Buya's story. Thank you so much, Buya, for sharing your voice and for letting us learn from you. And thank you, Aisha, for having the courage to learn how to put together a podcast. It is my great honor and privilege to see you grow your own impact. And one day, Aisha, we have to tell our listeners all about that too. As for you, my dear listener, wherever this podcast found you today, remember your voice matters. Use it to make an impact. If you want to start your own podcast, visit hashtag impact.com slash book, where I walk you through the first action steps to start podcasting with ease. Talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I just wanted to check in if you've been enjoying these little Easter eggs we're leaving in the past few episodes all the way in the end. You'll always hear these special treats and today might not be a special treat because I have lost my voice and now it's slowly returning but it doesn't, it doesn't sound quite right just yet. Hmm. Also, you might notice that I'm recording with my headphones and not with my really, really cool podcasting mic. So, apologies for that. But I just wanted to check if I should keep doing that with these Easter eggs. Hmm. Should I keep doing that? Think that's a good idea? Let me know. If you're one of the people listening all the way to the end... I really want to know who you are. I'm so curious. 
Can you send me a quick email to tell me who you are? You find me at regina at hashtag impact.com. Thanks so much for listening.